this is the time of year naturally, right, where we all start to think about maybe some, some things that we want to tweak or change in our lives. A new year is starting. It's a fresh start. It's a new beginning. So we just naturally tend to think, hey, what are some new things that I can maybe start or begin in my life that would be good for me? Or what are some things maybe to get rid of, you know, that, that I can push aside and dump off? And uh, because we all kind of have a similar goal to, uh, to some degree, which is how do we how do we simplify things, right? For most of us, we've, we've got a lot going on. There's just a lot happening. And we're trying to think, how can we, how can we uh, simplify this a bit? Because with all that stuff going on, right, comes a, a lot of our time and a lot of our energy and a lot of our resources, right, that all get put into those things. And so we're kind of thinking, hey, now is the time. Can I get some of that back, right, and kind of bring my stress levels down a little bit? So for me, uh, I've, I've got a family with kids. They're all sitting over here, and then they're friends and cousins and family. And so, but I've got a lot of kids. Yes, hello, Ava. And, and they all need uh, all sorts of things from me, like time and energy and resources. And then I have my health that I, you know, am, I got to be concerned with and put some time and energy into my health to take care of that. And, uh, and I have a Jeep and I have a brand new store that went in uh, right by my house, this four-wheel store, a four-by-four, like, off-roading store. And my kids are like, Dad, we, we've got to go to the store because... Uh, your Jeep needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of help. It needs to get a little higher and you need bigger tires on there. Am I right? Tell me, tell them I'm wrong. I'm right. And, and Zane wants to get a roof rack over my Jeep where I can store. I don't know what I'm going to store there, but we're going to put things up there, strap them down. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and I need a new bumper with a winch on the front. So if I get stuck, I could pull someone or me or you or whoever. And, and, and just, now, I haven't even gone into the store yet, okay? We've got plans to go. Uh, I'm, all, I'm like, I'm already stressed out. You know what I mean? I'm already stressed, and, and nothing's even happened. We just had a conversation about it, and I, but just the resources, like they're leaving my body uh, just in the conversation of what this could involve and require of me. Uh, so there's all these things going on. This year, 2022, is our 25th uh, wedding anniversary, right? So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for applauding. We receive gifts. We accept. I mean, uh, just kidding. We don't, we don't need anything. So it's our 25th. So we're like, hey, what's something, what's something special like we could do? You know, like maybe we could like go somewhere. We could like take a trip somewhere we've never gone before. Like that would be really cool. And, uh, and then we're like, okay, you know, when would we do that? Like calendar wise, like, ooh, that's a little tricky, you know? And, uh, and what's that going to cost, you know, if we go to that place in Europe that we've never been to or whatever? Like, oh, okay, so it kind of costs that. All right, okay. So there's that piece of it, you know? And then, like, oh, what about kids? Like, if we're gone for a while, like, what, who watches that? Like, what happens there? And we're like, forget it. We're just going to go out to dinner. Like, it's just too much. The time, the energy, the, no, I'm just kidding, honey. We're committed. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. Um... But you know, this time and energy, and so, and we all have that stuff. And then maybe you've, you know, you've got all that stuff going on, right? And then maybe, you, maybe you're taking care of like an elderly uh, person, parent, or whoever, family member that lives with you. You know, I mean, just a ton of your time and energy, resources put into caring for this, this person, you know? Uh, or maybe there's, maybe you're trying to do a little shift in your career and kind of get this position, this little promotion or something over here. And for that to happen, I mean, you're putting in extra double time because the day's coming here soon when that offer is going to be made and you want to get that promotion and get shifted over into that spot and it requires a lot of you for that, you know, for that to happen. It's going to require a lot. Here's the thing. So, some of these things, they might not be good for us. Many of them, most of them, they're, it's just stuff. They're not necessarily bad things at all, right? But with them comes uh, stress, right? With them can come anxiety. With them can come some worry, right? Am I going to get that promotion? Is it going to be the other guy? Are we going to figure this out? Are we going to have enough money for that? You know, there's this health thing, here, right? It's just worry. Uh, with them can often just come a lot of fear. So back to it, right? It's like, how do we get rid of some of these things so that we have less of that stuff going on in our lives? So I started thinking about Jesus because he's, he's always a good guy to go to and think about. And I started thinking, you know, when you think of what marks Jesus's life, right? It's not a life of stress, anxiety, worry, fear, those things, right? Uh, what marks, what defines like Jesus's life. I mean, if you just kind of think about it, you're like, hey, yeah, I think he's pretty peaceful. 
You know, not that he didn't have any emotions or passions. I mean, he did, but, but like at his core, like he seemed pretty peaceful, you know, and uh, he seemed pretty calm. And other people around him were afraid all the time. And he was always telling them, don't be so afraid. You know, don't, don't like have some faith, right? Like those are the things that marked his life. And I started thinking, okay, how can we become more like him? Oh, how is he like this? What's going on in his life? And I thought maybe it's because maybe he's so calm because Jesus just didn't have a lot going on. Like maybe he was just kind of a lazy guy. Like maybe I missed the chapter, right? Where his feet were up and he's drinking pina coladas all day long on the beach or something. I missed it and I reread it and it, 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 it's not there. It's not there. In fact, as I reread it, I'm like, ah, he's not lazy at all. Jesus is actually uh, quite busy, kind of going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, we would say it as his calendar was full. So I'm like, oh, okay, all right. But that's kind of good news because our calendar is full. But yet he was peaceful, but his calendar was full. Maybe, it was, maybe his calendar was full, but maybe it, was, it just wasn't that demanding on him. You know what I mean? I mean, <clears throat> he just didn't have the level of distractions that we have. He didn't have the level of demands. And then you reread, you're like, ooh, wow. Actually, people put some pretty high expectations on you. People put, put some pretty high demands on Jesus. Not only was he not lazy, but people uh, wanted a lot from him. He had a lot of pressure. Thing, it was not easy or comfortable, right? He had people pulling him in one direction one day, pushing him in another direction the next day. Crowds were lining up saying, you healed all them. Why don't you heal all me, right? You fed all them. Why don't you feed the rest of us? Hey, Jesus, if you would have been here a little bit sooner, my kid wouldn't be dead right now. Like the expectations and the demands and the pressures were pretty high on him. Yet, right, his anxiety is like chilling down like at a one, right? His level of fear is just simmering at like zero. So what's going on there? Maybe he just had, maybe his life was just really safe and secure. And then I was like, oh, no, that's right. He had that whole we're going to kill you thing going on, right? Where, where, he actually had a group of people that had some power and influence that said, uh, we have an agenda and it's to figure out how we can kill you and get away with it. And then when they figured that out, they went and did it. So I'm like, okay, I give you that one, Jesus. Maybe your threats on your life were a little bit greater than the threats on my life, you know? But yet still, again, and even more to our point, his fear level, like nothing. And he's telling all other people, his disciples, he's telling all of them, hey, guys, don't be so afraid. Relax a little bit. Calm down. It's going to be okay. So what is it about Jesus? It's not that he eliminates all the stuff going on in his life, right? The people that he needs to, that, that are demanding from him and wanting from him. It's not, he's not eliminating or get rid of the, getting rid of the threats that are coming at him. He's got all that stuff going on. So he's got tons of things happening around him, right? But get this, but he only has one thing happening in him. And I think this is sort of the reason why Jesus is marked by peace and calm and not having fear. All the stuff around him, but one thing inside of him. Uh, and so he helps us understand what this one thing is. He, he tells us about this. There's a section in the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 6. We're going to go there in a minute. You can start flipping there now if you want, where Jesus gives these uh, three sets of two things that he presents us with right in a row. And they sound totally unrelated. It just sounds like Jesus is kind of bouncing around from one thing to the next. He's talking about these two things, and he's talking about these two things. And they, it just sounds super random. I don't think they're random at all. I think he's basically saying the same thing every time, making the same point, right? And so three sets of two, and every time he presents these two things, his point is, man, if you want to have a life that's a little less stressful, has, has a little less anxiety and worry, it's not going to happen because you just get rid of the people and the stuff in your life. That's not the answer. You can't eliminate the threats. You can't, you can't control the stuff. But what you can do is you can pick one. You can pick one of these two things. You can make your life about one thing on the inside. And when your life is about one thing, it really does simplify things. And it really does give us lives that are marked a bit more like Jesus. So go there, Matthew 6, if you haven't gone there already. 
uh, verse 19. And Jesus starts with saying this. Maybe you've heard this before. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermins destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth, moths and vermins do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So Jesus makes this, what he's talking about, he makes an internal issue, right? A heart issue. And here's his point. <clears throat> here's the first set of two. There's two treasures. There's an earthly treasure and there's a heavenly treasure. And he's like, this earthly treasure, it's gonna rot, it's going to get stolen at times. The heavenly treasure, it's safe, it's secure, it's eternal, right? Moths don't chow down on it. And people don't, vermins don't break in and steal. It's secure. What we often do, and don't miss this, because I think this is kind of an important thing for us to take away from today. What we often do is we figure out, how do I have a little bit of both of those? You know, I want heavenly treasure, but I also want some earthly treasure. Earthly treasure is just this, as anything that we can kind of go after and fill our lives with, but the issue is it becomes a treasure, right, that's filling our hearts like we read. Uh, and this doesn't last. So I, I had a, a, a mountain bike. I got it from the sports chalet right over here that went out of business some years back. I went in, they had a big sale on it, I bought it. And it's a mountain bike, it's designed to obviously ride on mountains, hence the name. And I never did that. I rode around a little bit, never went on mountains. Uh, my oldest son, Hayden, when he was still living at home, he said, hey, dad, can I take that bike? I want to actually do something with it and go ride mountains with it. Uh, I said, yeah, sure. So he takes the bike. He's going out doing some mountain bike riding. He's having fun. He's, he's loving it, does that you know, a handful of times, really enjoys it. One day he comes home. He puts the bike kind of in the front of the garage. He doesn't close the garage. And a couple hours later, I walk out in the garage. And yes, a vermin came in and took it, stole it, it's gone, right? Now, the bike wasn't my treasure, so I didn't get all upset and freaked out and worked up, right? But it did remind me of something that Jesus is saying here, uh, that this earthly treasure though, it will go. One way or another, it will go away, right? It doesn't last forever. So if our treasure uh, is your youthfulness, if your youthfulness is your treasure that you're hanging on to, when you wake up tomorrow and you look in that mirror and you see another crack going right across your forehead, right? Your stress level is going to go a little bit higher, right? Which ironically is only going to make you crack again. So think about that before bonus, uh, right? And then, you know, when the office calls you, it says, I'm sorry, we've got to cancel your Botox appointment. Now you are upset and you're angry because you're treasuring this youthfulness and people are taking it away from you. It's slipping out of your fingers. If you're treasuring, right, uh, everything you're putting aside for retirement, I'm not saying that saving's bad, but your, your retirement and this money, if that's your treasure, right, then when the market kind of crashes or goes down or if it starts slipping away in some way, you become afraid, become a bit, or, or, or if you're treasuring your health and all of a sudden, uh, like, Pretty much we all do. Something bad happens with your health. We become very afraid or worried about that. If our treasure is uh, our status, right? How people see us and view us in, in our status. And so because of that, we, we really, really want that promotion. So as the, as the date gets closer and closer and closer and closer to when someone's gonna be promoted, you or somebody else at work, right? Your stress levels are going through the roof, right? You're working harder than you've ever done. Your family this doesn't know what's wrong with you, right? It's all falling apart at home, but you're just pressing in and you're going after it because you're treasuring this status. And then regardless, you know, and then if it doesn't happen, I mean, you're crushed and devastated and upset and worried about what might happen and angry. Our earthly treasures, one way or another, they don't last forever. Jesus says, our, do we have an earthly treasure or a heavenly treasure? A heavenly treasure is uh, the treasure found in the kingdom of God. So think of Jesus' uh, life, his, his ethics, his morals, his, his teachings, the way he lived, the things that he cared about. And are those the things that mark our lives in the way that we're living? So do we, are we concerned about uh, loving our neighbors the way that Jesus taught us to? Is that how we're living our lives? Do we care about bringing justice to areas of injustice like Jesus did? Do we care about righteousness and, and, and bringing righteousness to all the places of wrongness 
Uh, do, we, do we care about, are we investing in as our treasure community and family? Because Jesus said this whole kingdom thing, if you're all one big family. They're brothers and, and sisters. Are we treasuring that? Are we, are we treasuring and living out hospitality, you know, welcoming in the other? Uh, are those the things uh, that we're seeking after, the treasure that we're doing, or uh, the earthly one? And so Jesus' point is this. This is his point. Pick one. Pick one. Make your life about one thing. Make your life about one treasure. He's not saying in there, go after both treasures a little bit like we often do. What, he's, what he is saying is, here's two treasures. Pick one. Make your life about one thing. Because get this, when your life, when you make your life about one treasure that you can't lose, you won't be so worried. You won't be so afraid when you do lose everything else, right? And we all will. It's, it's all those vermins, those moths, they're real. They can vouch for it. They're hanging around my house, actually, going into my garage. Okay, then here's the second one. Remember, there were three sets of two. And he basically just says the same thing now in a couple other ways. He says there's, uh, in the next verse, verse 22, Jesus says this, uh, the eye talks about two eyes. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. If your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So first we have two treasures. Now we have two eyes. Jesus says there's good eyes or healthy eyes and there's evil eyes or unhealthy bad eyes. Uh, in the ancient world, they viewed all this a little bit differently than we do. In the ancient world, they believed that the condition of your heart determined how you saw the people in the world around you. So if, you're, if, the, if the light within you, is what Jesus is saying, if the light within you, if the condition of your heart is good and healthy, you're full of light, then what will come out of your eyes, what you will see, will be, uh, in terms of people in the world, there will be plenty you will see plenty. There will be an abundance. You will, you'll be a generous person, right? How we often define this is the opposite, right? What goes into our eyes goes down and, and determines the conditions of our heart. So uh, if, if we see scarcity, if we, if we see a scarcity issue, then what goes down into our heart is I better hoard and greed and hang on to stuff. So perfect example of this, uh, yesterday morning, Christmas morning, kids come downstairs and they look under the tree. What happens if they only see two presents under the tree? If they see what goes in is, oh, we've got a major problem. Something, something went wrong here, right? If they walk down and they see lots of gifts and presents, then what goes down into their hearts? I'm happy. Life is good. It's all great. And so what do we do as parents? And we work really hard to make sure that the same amount of presence goes to each kid, right? Because if you got, if I got, if you got four and I got one and a half, that's a problem, you know? And so we work hard at this. This, this, is, this is how we see. If we see uh, uh, a scarcity issue, uh, then, what, then what goes down is we, we hoard and we're greedy. So this is like the toilet paper thing a couple years ago. And to this day, I've never figured that out. I don't understand that. But there was, there was this hoarding greedy thing, right? And then you, when, by the time you walk into the third store and there's no toilet paper, you start, we start getting afraid. We start, start worrying, right? Fear starts taking over my life. And so Jesus is saying, uh, here's good eyes, here's healthy eyes or in bad eyes. And the, the issue is uh, pick one, right? What is fear? filling your life. So, so fill your life with one light, right? That's what Jesus said. If, if the light that's in you is good, then your eyes will be good. If the light that's in you is darkness, then what you will see, what will be dark, you'll see a scarcity issue and you'll be hoarding and greed, right? If the light that's in you is good, what will come out? You'll have healthy eyes. You'll see abundance. You'll see plenty. You'll be generous and you'll give. Make your life about one thing. Again, this is the key. Don't fill your life with both like we often do, some light and some darkness. And we try to put both of it, both of them in us. And then we see what comes out is both. And it creates 
a life where we experience more worry and anxiety and fear and things that come with it. When we fill our lives with God's light, we don't have to worry so much when darkness comes all around us. And it will. It will, right? It's just the world that we live in. It will happen. But when we're filled with light, we don't have to worry or be afraid of the dark. And here's the last one that Jesus gives. First, two treasures, two eyes, two masters. No one can serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and you'll love the other. You'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. So uh, two masters, God as our master or money as our master. When God is functioning as our master and we trust him, we're safe and secure. When, when money is our master and we're uh, trusting that, things can get shady. Now, why do we do that, right? And Jesus' point, by the way, this is important, his point is not that money or wealth is inherently uh, bad or evil, but why do we often choose money or things like that as our master? Because what do we know? That with money, uh, we have some power. We have some control. Uh, with money, we can create opportunities for ourselves that you can't do without money right? That's just part of reality, right? Uh, with money, we can avoid certain challenges in life uh, because of the money that we have. And the issue, the issue is not uh, that money or wealth is inherently wrong. The issue is which one is your master? And again, we often, we want to have a little bit of both. And Jesus's point again is pick one, pick one and devote your life to one God. Devote your life with one God. Why does he talk this way about money and wealth? Because Jesus knows that wealth uh, is a really good replacement for God in our lives. That we view it that way. We treat it that way. Jesus knows that wealth can become, for us, a really, really good alternative to serving and trusting God. Uh, you've noticed perhaps that I'm wearing a sweet t-shirt. Uh, this is made by Matt Lou here at the Grove. It's a camel. Don't, I'll get to you guys in a second. It's a camel with a needle hanging off of it with the word slightly difficult. And what I'm doing right now is slightly awkward, but I do want you to see the shirt, right? So this comes out of, uh, this comes out of Jesus when he has this verse, it's in Matthew 2, he just says, you know what? It's actually easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus's point is not that riches or wealth are inherently bad, but what Jesus knows is wealth is a really good alternative to God in our lives, that we make riches a, a, a replacement for serving God in our lives. And Jesus's point, again, same thing, he's just done it over and over and over, is pick one. Devote your life to one God. Make your life about one thing. I'm convinced, I am convinced that Jesus's life was full of more stuff going on than yours or mine. He had more distractions than we have. He, he had uh, more, way more demands on him than I have on me. He, he had, he absolutely had people and even spiritual forces competing for his devotion. Absolutely but he made his life about one thing and it defined who he was and it brought all the stress and the anxiety down. So last, last story and I'm done. Mary and Martha, Jesus shows up at their house one day. Jesus goes in, he sits down and Mary comes over and sits down at Jesus's feet and listens to him. 
And Martha goes in the kitchen and she's busy preparing and getting the food ready, getting the room ready, doing all the stuff. And, and, and she's doing it for a while all by herself. And she's getting frustrated. She's getting a bit angry, you know, because she's got to do all the work. And finally, she goes out into the room where Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. And she says, Jesus, tell Mary to get up, get her lazy bag of bones in the room with me and help me doing all this by myself. And here's what Jesus says to her, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and you are upset about many things, but few things are needed, indeed, only one. And what Mary has chosen, Mary's chosen what is better and it will not be taken from her. Jesus is saying this, he's getting at the same thing. Make your life about, ultimately, about one thing right? One thing, one treasure, one light, one God that we serve, right? Make your life about Jesus. So here's my, here's my challenge for you as we close out, ready? All these, it's a new year, all these people, they're going to be telling you to walk more, get your step count up, uh, telling you to go to the gym and exercise and all that stuff. Forget all that. My challenge for you is to sit, huh? How do you like that? Who's with me? Just sit. Just sit around, sit around. Specifically, it's called the Mary Sitting Challenge. Here's my challenge for you. This is for real. The Mary Sitting Challenge. I challenge you to just sit with Jesus every day and sit with him for as long as it takes for all the stuff, all the demands, all the distractions, all the things to just fall down into their proper place in our lives. Some of them aren't good and they can just go by the wayside. But many of them, they're not gonna go away. They're not gonna disappear. They're not gonna vanish. But let them fall down into their proper place. And here's the kicker. In all of the stress and worry and anxiety and fear that's attached to them, let them fall down into their proper place so that one thing, Jesus, can rise to the surface, to the top, as the one thing that your life is about. And allow yourself to experience more of his peace and calm and faith and less stress and anxiety and worry and fear.